Hi everyone, so I'm Sam Zanti and I'm from the Indiana Student Board of Directors and today I'm interviewing Nicole Adi, the Director of Workforce Development at Andres and Hauser. Hi guys, my name is Nicole Adi. Um, like Sam said, I'm the Director of Workforce Development at Andres and Hauser. Um, I've been with the company about nine months. Prior to that, I was an engineering and technology high school teacher. Um, locally with Central Nine, I was a director um, of the school for about six years um, total being at the school, three of which were the assistant director and three were the director. So lots of close ties to high school students and I'm really excited to be able to share some information about what Anderson Hauser does. And um, I never envisioned myself leaving education, um, but I think there's a great opportunity for us to connect industry and education. And, and FIRST is one of those organizations that does a wonderful job of doing that. So I'm happy to be, able to be here today and happy to um, share some information with you. So I have a couple questions prepared already. So um, the first thing I kind of want to talk about is what Anderson Hauser does. Okay, um, and I have a presentation I would love to share with um, students. Um, so I'll pull that up and give you a little bit of information about what we do. So a lot of times you guys have heard of measurement before and whenever I ask and survey students, I'll say, what do you think of when you think of measurement? And I know that I can't get interaction right now with you, but a lot of the answers I get are things like inches and measurements and rulers and things like measuring volume or weight. So those are all things that people typically think of when they think of measurement. Um, Anderson Hauser is a company that makes things that measure stuff, um, but not these typical things that you're used to hearing about. We measure things like flow, level, pressure, temperature, and other analytical type measurements for gas and chemicals. And we are in lots and lots of different industries. So we make things that help other manufacturers create their products. So things like food and beverage industry, water, wastewater, chemical, life sciences, oil and gas, primaries and metals, and power and energy. So if there's something being produced and it has something that's flowing, whether it's fluid or solids that's going through a process, that's process automation is what we do, then these are the different industries that we serve. And some of them you may be familiar with. Um, and I'll go through a few of those in a moment, but here's an example of some of our um, technologies over time. Um, Anderson Hauser started with a patent in 1957 for a capacitance level measurement device. And then you can see through time, all of the different changes and modifications that have happened to products. And one of those most recently, if you see at the bottom, is kind of a heartbeat technology that allows us to communicate with our instruments um, remotely um, through a heart um, communication. And it allows us to keep a status on where our products are, how they're functioning, how they're operating, and how they're doing without having to be present and right next to those. So if you ever come to Anderson Hauser, you participate in any of our events, um, you would see some of these products and you can interact with them. Some of our customers, um, you've probably heard of a lot of these. If you hadn't heard of Anderson Hauser before, you've probably heard of BP or Nestle, um, Shell, Eli Lilly, Coca-Cola Company, Procter and Gam Gamble, and as well as the others listed. All of these companies use our products, our measuring devices in their processes to create their products. So if you've ever been to a Love's truck stop or a Pilot truck stop, you've probably um, seen a typical gas fueling device. Well, there are also um, places where trucks have to go, like your diesel trucks, um, to fill up with DEF fluid, the diesel exhaust fluid. And our Coriolis meters are installed in those pumps. Um, and what I have for you, and I'll be happy to share with um, your team, are some very cool videos and things. So if any of you are interested in those, it'll kind of explain what the Coriolis effect and how it works and what that is. So if, if you think of um, a water hose, when you turn the water on, how it kind of um, sways when you first turn it on, that's the fluid going through that product. That's kind of how a Coriolis meter works. It measures that difference in um, fluctuation between the two tubes, which is kind of cool. Um, if you've probably heard of Shell, um, our meters are used out on the oil rigs in the ocean to help measure flow, whether that's the crude oil, um, they help measure level to keep that entire um, rig level while it's out on the ocean. And then we also have pressure devices to make sure the pipelines are safe and um, keeping people safe as well. Nestle, if any of you have driven up I-69 near Anderson, you've probably seen this facility. 
um, they create Nesquik coffee creamers, et cetera. And so our level devices are in tanks and they work with radar signals that send down a signal and then that signal bounces off the product and comes back up and receives that signal. Um, and those bins are measuring levels of sugar. And then we also have our devices that are measuring flow, um, milk receiving and blending of that milk. We're also measuring temperature and a local. Again, the products that we make are using are being used to keep people safe and healthy and um, the environment clean and healthy as well. If you think about Tesla, that's another cool place. They use our products and they're building the Giga factory out in the West. And right now um, it's in construction, so it's not quite finished yet, but all of the utilities in that facility will be using our NH instruments. Anderson Hauser is a family owned company. So that's really important when you're looking at future career opportunities. Um, we're not publicly traded on the stock market. So even in downturns in the market or even right now, I know many of you are experiencing a much different time, even me right now I'm working from home. Um, but I have um, the stability in a family owned company that they aren't going to lay people off during these times of uncertainty. So they have invested enough in their workforce and invested enough in the communities that they serve to provide that stability um, for those workers in that workforce. Anderson Hauser is global. Um, so even though our North American headquarters is located in Greenwood and you can see that um, over the US segment there on the left side of your screen, you'll see lots of other dots on the screen from anywhere from Switzerland and Germany, which is where our headquarters globally is located. Um, our North American headquarters is here in Greenwood, which is awesome. But you can see lots of other different opportunities around the world. So if you have an interest in traveling internationally or even across the country, there are lots and lots of opportunities to do so. Um, here in the US, we started in Massachusetts in 1970 with a very small facility where we produced our products. And then um, in 74 is whenever the production moved to Greenwood. And at that point, just eight employees and about 2,000 square feet of people. Now today, um, you can see a picture of our whole campus um, right off of Worsfield Road off of I-65. We have um, approximately 500 employees, um, over 500,000 square feet of facility space. Um, and then a total across the US because we have other locations, we have other workforce because we have regional centers in Charlotte, Philadelphia, and Houston. And then we also have production in California as well, which is kind of cool. If you look at specifically in Greenwood, we are producing and manufacturing several products. Um, we have a facility that's manufacturing the level and pressure devices that we spoke of. We have a facility that's measuring the flow or manufacturing the flow devices. And then we have facility that's doing temperature as well. So I know some of your questions will kind of help um, introduce the audience to some of our opportunities. Um, and I can just share a few of those now. We offer internship opportunities both for high school and college students. Now those have been filled so far for this summer and next school year, but we will be hiring. Um, we have a high school student that's going to join us as an engineering intern and the high school student's going to in, uh, intern with us as a controlling intern, so part of the finance side. We also have college interns. We have about 12 of those that are going to start in May and June pending the coronavirus. And we may have some of them working remotely as well. We have awesome scholarship opportunities, and then of course, our full-time employment. So that's my basic overview of what ENH is. Um, and I'll um, stop sharing my screen so that um, if you wanna take control back, you can. Um, Trying to find, there it is, found it. There we go. Okay, so my first question is, what kinds of engineers does Anderson Hauser specifically hire? Yeah, we have lots of different types of engineers that work with us, um, and we hire lots of different uh, majors. Um, but most of the time, um, we have a strong focus of chemical engineers. If you looked at um, some of the things that we're producing, we're producing um, level and pressure and um, analytical for gas and chemicals. So there's a strong need for um, chemical engineers, but we also have a lot of mechanical engineers that we hire. We hire industrial engineers as well. 
And even if we don't hire somebody as an engineer, uh, maybe if somebody comes in with a two year degree, maybe as an engineering technician, we will help through um, support for tuition to help people go back and then continue to study different areas to help them be a, a more contributing partner in the company. Awesome. Um, besides engineers, what are the other jobs that Engine Hauser has, especially like just in Indiana in general? Yeah, so a lot of times people, when they think of manufacturing, they think, okay, you're either going to be out in production or you're going to be an engineer. Those are the only two jobs that you can have. But that is so much farther from the truth than it could be. So we have like the group that I'm in right now is called Human Resources. So we work with keeping the people side of the company going. So we hire, we bring in new people, we recruit, we, we find new talent. I work specifically with K-12 and post-secondary partners heavily. Um, we also have strong um, sales and marketing teams. So if you're interested in whether it's digital marketing or um, social media type platforms, we do marketing that way, um, or selling our product. A lot of the engineers we hire, we hire for their technical skill, but we also hire because we want them to be a social engineer. We want them um, to have great customer service experience, whether they're an engineer or they're gonna be a marketing or um, other person as well. So we have people that are doing our logistics, that are shipping our products out, making sure that things get where they're supposed to get. We have people in the finance area, business side, more of that business side of um, manufacturing. We have um, tech support. That's more of the problem solving aspect of our engineers. We have sales, inside sales, outside sales. And we also work with um, folks across the country that help sell our product. So lots of different opportunities um, for sales and manufacturing industrial. If there's a place we can probably, um, and you've got the skills for customer service, we'll find the right fit. So um, with that, what are the important traits that you um, have that workers at Andrews and Hauser have in order to be successful at the company? Yeah, so the biggest piece, like I mentioned, is making sure that somebody comes in with customer service experience. So even when we're interviewing our interns, we're interviewing whether that's high school or college, we're interviewing our new rotational engineers that come on board, or we're um, interviewing somebody that's gonna go into marketing. We wanna make sure that they have that ability to assist the customer and help them in whatever way possible. Um, so even a job as simple as working at a pizza place in high school is really important to us. We wanna see those opportunities that you've had to work with customers on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So, we're looking for that. Um, we're also looking for a really good culture fit um, to make sure that you fit into our organization and that you can, on one end, be innovative and creative and challenge ideas, but also be receptive to feedback from others. We don't want somebody that's, you know, well, this is all my idea and this is all we need to do. This is the path we're going. We want to make sure that people are collaborative and team workers um, in our organization. Um, to back off of that, I know you touched on the internships in your presentation, but um, when it comes to careers and after high school and after all that, um, college and like post-secondary school and all that, um, how do people start preparing themselves to be successful in the career that they pursue throughout that? Absolutely. Um, one of the best ways that I can share with students is that you get out and you try the areas of you know, interest that you have. So first robotics is a great way to get out and try that career field. Do you like problem solving? Do you like taking things apart and putting them back together? Um, getting an opportunity to go try on through a job shadow. So go out and job shadow with a company. Even if an internship isn't an opportunity for you right now, there are certainly opportunities with companies that let you come in and shadow and experience that job and that career and see if it's a right fit for you. Feel like it is a right fit, then start pursuing opportunities for internships and do so with multiple companies and find out what sort of company you want to work for one day. Um, those are all wonderful things that are going to look one on your resume awesome, um, but are also going to look good um, for companies that are going to hire you in the future, whether those are scholarship opportunities or hiring opportunities. Um, you just have made yourself more well rounded and you have a better opportunity to make those decisions to where you want to go. In the future. Awesome, awesome. So there's 
there's a mention of like job fairs and like finding those internships and like providing those outlets. Um, what are some common mistakes you see that students have when they attend these and how should they properly prepare to make sure that they're getting um, the job that's like the best fit for them? Um, I've been involved in a couple of career fairs um, since I started last July. So I don't have a, a wealth of knowledge in that field, but what I can say, and it's so much easier said than done, is to just relax and be yourself when you're at a career fair. So many times students try to, um, it's hard to say, like puff up and be like, I am professional and I'm doing this, but just relax and be yourself and share what skills and things that you do have. Um, think about the projects that you've done. Yeah, you can say you've been in this club and that club and you've done, you know, you've been the president of this or the, you know, the vice president of this, but unless you give a story or an explanation or a description of what you did, then it just becomes a so what. So what, you were president. What does that mean? That's the stuff that we want to hear at career fairs is what you have done and how you have led teams, how you have followed in teams. It's good to be a leader and a follower, not just a leader all the time. So how can you be both? And just sharing those at career fairs, um, specifically projects and being yourself and just being relatable. A lot of times we're looking more for those customer service skills at that point, as opposed to your accomplishments and being able to hold a conversation. Awesome. So I have a couple of my own questions. One of those was, um, I know you mentioned that before you worked at Anderson Houser, you were, uh, did, was it a high school teacher mm -hmm. um, in engineering and technology? I yes. Think? So yes. how has, how did that job help you work at Anderson Houser? And I know you said you specialize in um, the K-12 to department, but I was just wondering how that's helped. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I actually went to college to be a technology and engineering teacher. That's what I went to school to be because I took some classes in high school that really got me excited. Um, I took a mechanical drawing class. I took a small engine class in high school that got me so pumped about that. And I knew that I always wanted to be a teacher. So those were like the molding of both worlds together because I can teach something that's always changing and new and I get to teach kids, which was awesome. Um, so I was able to do that for 12 years and um, being able to interact with students is my favorite part of that job and absolutely loved it. Um, then when I stepped into administration and I was working with teachers on a different level, um, it was just a whole new world to me. I had been on my teacher side, but I had no idea what was going on in the other walls of the classrooms around the school. So in this capacity, I was able to see and learn so many different techniques and strategies that I didn't know about as a teacher in my own classroom. And like I said, I never anticipated leaving education. I, that's what my plan was, that's what I was doing. And then um, Anderson Hauser approached me about um, coming in and helping um, take over for somebody who was retiring in June. And um, at the time, there were some things changing at the state level with new graduation pathways and requirements for students to graduate. And I saw the opportunity to help change and mold and give some perspective on the education world to the industry side. So that's why I made the change. But some of those things, working with students, working with teachers, working with community members, were all elements that are helping me now um, in this role at Anderson Hauser. And I'm super excited about it. Now, I do miss the kids, do miss the teachers. So being able to interact with you guys in this kind of fashion is really cool. So thank you. So awesome. I know you talked a lot about the, like, the different projects that Anderson Hauser does. What is like your favorite projects that you've seen pursued? Or, like what's the most interesting thing that you've seen worked on? Yeah, um, there's a really cool, I'm going to do two because one is more technical and one is more um, what I'm working on in, in my role right now. But I think the process training unit is really cool. It, um, it's a, a unit that both customers, um, our employees, other employees of our sales representatives can come in and get training on this massive unit that has all of our products on it. So you'll see a level device on a giant tank, or you'll see a flow device on a pipe or a tubing. Um, and these are all in one encompassed room that you can go and experience all these things and test them and try them out. And I think it's really cool because I get to bring in students. I can bring in high school students, college students, and they can come in and they can do activities and, and learn and try and do these things. I can send them learning activities via video before they come so they can know what to expect when they get there and learn a little bit more about the products. 
So that's on the technical side, one of my coolest features. Plus going on tours and manufacturing, that's really cool too. And being able to take students on those tours is awesome. One thing that I'm really excited about right now is the opportunity to provide, um, we already have an apprenticeship program for students when they graduate high school, and that would allow them to get an associate's degree for free, and they earn it over three years um, through Ivy Tech. And we're paying the student to work for us three days a week. We're paying them while they're in school, so you're getting paid to sit in class two days a week, plus we're paying for the degree. Um, it's just a win-win. And then when you're coming out, you already have a job guaranteed for two years with us after that three-year period. So that's an awesome program. But what I'm working on right now is a project in collaboration with some high schools in our area that would allow us to take that model into the junior and senior year of high school so that students could get an associate's degree in industrial technology with a focus in automation robotics technology and get work experience, not with ju just Anderson Hauser, but some other companies in the area as well over that two years. So when they graduate at the associates, um, they could have potential to get that apprenticeship license once they get more work hours. And um, I'm just really excited about that. And we're hoping to be able to launch that this fall to eighth graders because it would take four years um, to get through that. So that's one I'm super excited about. So awesome. Yeah, that's definitely a great opportunity for all those students. Yeah, that's super, super cool. So then I think one of my other things that I wanted to ask you, because I know your job, um, it, at least it seems a lot different than like the typical, like what you would see in your company's kind of job. I was just wondering, how do you interact with like the different people within the company with your job being not necessarily like really like super technical based? <laughs> yeah, um, that is definitely one of those things that I am learning as I go. And I had a, a very strong background in automation, robotics, manufacturing, STEM, sciences, math, all of those pieces I had before I came to Nursing Hauser. But I had no idea what process automation was. I didn't know anything about these measuring devices when I came into this company. I thought, well, I thought I knew a lot about manufacturing. I don't know anything about this world. So I spent a lot of time learning and we have some great educational resources. We have great training. Um, people in our company that help us learn, whether it's independently on my own through some online learning, like you guys are probably doing right now with your schools, or I can set up time to ask questions. So the culture is such that all I have to do is ask and say, hey, can you show me this? And the technical people are very happy to show me that. So slowly I'm starting to learn those processes and procedures myself, but um, I love the ability to go and ask somebody a question and it's no hesitation. Yep, come on down. Even during the pandemic right now, the same person that I would just go downstairs and say, hey, can you help me with this? We set up go to meetings and he's walking me through it through virtual meetings to, to learn what I need to learn. So no worries there. Um, and I was worried that people wouldn't take me seriously, not being from the technical world coming in, but absolutely not. They welcome me with open arms. So it's been awesome. Awesome. What's your, and then I guess one of my last questions is what is your just favorite thing about your, your job and like how Anderson Hauser like works as a company just in, in general? I, it's the easy part and it's in the slogan, it's people for process automation. So, and this is true in whatever job I've had, it's always the people. I love working with people and I think that the culture at Anderson Hauser is so unique. Um, I'd interacted with lots of companies over my time as a teacher, whether they were on my advisory board or working with them at Central Nine, I had lots of interactions and I had never had any negative experiences with folks when I worked with them at Indris and Hauser. So it has always been positive. Now, not saying that we can't challenge and we can't innovate because we definitely do that. I feel really good about the team that I work with, um, whether it's my individual team or the larger team of people on campus or globally, which is really cool. I get to have meetings with people across the world, which is awesome. Um, so people and that culture have been my favorite part. Awesome. So um, I guess my, one of my last questions was, is um, how involved are like first students within Interest and Hauser? Like, do you see a lot of people that have been involved in first come in or like do you see first involvement in the community? Um, we definitely see it um, on our resumes that come in. And things from our students and we talk with people at career fairs and we're seeing more of that as we go through especially um, with our community career and education forum that we do each year 
we try to bring in our robotics students teams from the local area to come in and highlight their projects that they're working on and show not only our community but show the younger students coming in what they could be capable of doing um, so we're seeing more of that um, even in our applications so i know i was reviewing intern applications i saw several that had that on their resume and when i see it i know it means quality so it's great to see and we, we look for the things like first robotics um, because those are hands-on real world experiences of problem solving that we need in our people Awesome. Well, that was the, I think the last question I had. So thank you okay. so much for um, your time and the interview. It was awesome. And it was awesome to hear about your job and all that you do. Well, thank you. It's been fun. And um, if anybody ever has any questions, um, have them reach out. And if you'd like, Sam, I can send you a link um, to a SharePoint site that has lots of links to videos and things that students could take a look at and get a little more detail on our internships, our apprenticeships, our rotational engineering program, et cetera. I'd be happy to do that. That would be awesome. Thank you. You're welcome.